Something I tend to do a lot on my channel is section all champions into categories based on certain attributes that they share. In the past, I've made videos on the likes of empowered ability users, split pushers, infinite scalers, and so on. And while they're technically not official classifications recognized by the game, you guys are more or less well aware of what I'm talking about. That's the kind of basis for how my videos are founded upon. But there's one classification that has slipped under the radar for a while now until a few comments asked for my thoughts on it. Bruises in this game are often associated with the fighter class, more specifically juggernauts, which I went in depth on not too long ago. Generally speaking though, fighters usually consist of physical damage dealers, as is the case for both divers and juggernauts. Yet bruisers that are capable of dealing magic damage do exist, albeit very few in number. So for today, I want to discuss AP bruises in League, and why the game doesn't really give them their own spotlight like they do for others. Really quickly though, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, FaceCheck. For those of you who are looking for a more convenient way to access information on champions and players from game to game, FaceCheck is an overlay app found on Overwolf that shows relevant stats and such without you having to manually search them up on your browser. There are three key parts to make note of. The first is Champ Select, where FaceCheck searches and displays your team members' profiles to see what champs they play and if they're potentially autofilled, while for you it recommends items and runes for you to use based on what champion you lock in. While in game, as the players load in, it displays a full stat breakdown and track record of all 9 other players, with tags detailing their build paths and recent playstyle habits, such as if they play really aggressive early game or if they like to split push. You're also able to search up what specific runes they took besides their keystone and secondary so you know exactly what they're fielding. Pray this up with their previous builds and you'll be able to notice if they're trying any funky off-meta strategies. Finally, when you wrap up the game, there's a full analysis waiting for you detailing your performance to see what you did well, what you did wrong, or what you did that was different from what you normally do, so you can see what you need to improve on. All in all, it's a wonderful companion app that's here for your convenience and improvement, so I highly suggest you check it out through the link on screen, which is also in the description. Thanks once again to FaceCheck for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. To start, what does the term bruiser even mean? Well, in the real world, bruiser is slang for someone who is tough, aggressive, usually belligerent, and enjoys getting into fights and arguments, a very contentious person. It can also be used to describe a professional boxer. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree in the context of video games either. Bruisers denote a character or a class well known for their equal parts durability and force. In League's case, bruisers are a diverse group of short-range melee combatants who excel at both dealing and surviving damage. With easy access to heavy continuous damage, also known as damage per second or DPS, and a host of innate defenses, they thrive in extended fights as they seek out enemies to take down. But their limited range puts them at constant risk of being kept at bay or kited by their opponents via crowd control, range, and mobility. Essentially, for those of you who played RPGs or MMOs, bruisers will closely resemble the warrior class. High damage, good durability, but a little on the slow and stubby side. Of course, terminology isn't necessarily dogma, and there are exceptions to every rule. I doubt anyone would say that Aatrox is low range, and someone like Urgot isn't exactly a melee champion, but you can kind of get the idea as to what a bruiser is supposed to be. It's a lot easier to make them physical damage dealers, as champions who build attack damage naturally have more consistent uptime in DPS by virtue of their basic attacks, whereas magic damage dealers don't get more auto attack damage from building ability power outside of innate scaling within their kit. And that brings us to AP Bruisers. Magic damage as a whole is ordinarily associated with ranged champions. If we take a look at the mage class, the vast majority of its roster are ranged both in attacks and abilities. That's not to say AP melee champions don't exist, but if you saw the phrase AP melee, who would be the first to pop up in your head? Chances are it'd be an assassin, right? Akali, Diana, Echo, Fizz, Katarina, Cassidy. The magic damage doesn't really evoke a slow hulking bulking bruiser, does it? Other champion groups tend to have a hard cutoff as to what is or what isn't, such as infinite scalers. Does a champion have an ability or constant that grows in value indefinitely? Then yes, they're infinite scalers. AP melee champions are rotated in and out of the bruiser category very frequently. One such instance would be Diana. Most of the time, she runs her normal assassin slash diver build one-shotting with QE and ultimate. But for the better part of season 12, you're more likely than not have witnessed the occasional bruiser Diana, where the player would opt for Iceborne Gauntlet Demonic Embrace. There's also the Tangrelia build, where she would go Frozen Heart Rush, and to some extent, one might even consider Silas to be an AP bruiser since he builds items that lean more towards survivability than any percent glitchless one-shot AD carry speedrun, though he tends to do that anyway. With all that established, here's what I think would make up the AP bruiser category. Obviously, we have the three champions on the thumbnail, Mordekaiser, Gragas, and Rumble. Alongside that, I'll add Silas, Singed, Shivana, and... I think that's really about it. There's only like 6 champions that I would consider AP Bruiser these days. Gragas and Singe used to be tanks, but now they build a hybrid between magic damage and tank. Shivana used to be an on-hit physical damage dealer, but in light of her recent changes and such, she pretty much grows ability power with items like Demonic Embrace. 
It would be hard to say Rumble is an AP Bruiser too. Technically, he is a melee auto attacker, but no one would ever argue he struggles against ranged champions or gets kited like other juggernauts can, which attributes to why he's in the battle mage category and not juggernauts. And of course, we already explained Silas. In other words, the only true unequivocal AP Bruiser in this game is Mordekaiser, begging the question, why only him? Why are there so many physical damage dealers than magic? There are several elements pertaining to that. The first and most notable one lies in the fundamental difference between magic and physical damage. As mentioned earlier, building attack damage items like long swords, serrated dirt, phage and such not only supplement the effectiveness of your damaging abilities but also your basic attacks. By extension, physical damage is much more present in this game than magic. Minions all do physical damage, jungle monsters with the exception of Gromp do physical, turrets do physical damage. Furthermore, far more stats interface with physical damage than magic, such as attack speed. 100 AD with 2.0 attack speed has the same basic attack DPS as 200 AD with 1.0 attack speed. Normal attacks also benefit from on-hit effects and crit chance, so in a general sense, power from attack damage is distributed more flexibly across a champion compared to magic damage, which is virtually exclusive to just abilities. Why this matters is due to how bruises function in League. They have really big damage output, especially when you account for their resilience in combat, but damage comes in many forms. It can be front-loaded, like what you would see from assassins, heavy amounts of damage inflicted in a short time span right out the gate. It can be persistent, like what you would see from marksmen and battle mages, a steady stream of damage. It can be backloaded, like what you would see from skirmishers and juggernauts, where the damage ramps up over the course of a fight or they have a finishing attack. To elaborate, let's examine three AD juggernauts. The first is Aatrox. What kind of damage does he specialize in? Backloaded. His Darken Blade ramps up in power with each use, with the final attack dishing out a brutal 216 plus 192% AD. By the way, when I say damage specialization, I'm referring to in a full-blown fight. More often than not, Aatrox does prefer to trade with just the first and second Q in neutral. Moving on though, next we have Seth. What's his main damage? It's backloaded as well. He's got really solid DPS thanks to his rapid punches, but during an all-in battle, you have to be more concerned about Haymaker, especially in the late game when it starts hitting for over a grand in true damage. Lastly, we have Darius, also backloaded. Your goal is to kill him before he gets 5 stacks and dunks you for half your health in one blow. Juggernauts are primarily backloaded damage dealers because it would be unfair for them to have either front-loaded or persistent when they're so beefy. But to compensate for that, items are tailor-made to allow them to survive long enough to get to that point and items are pivotal to the viability and popularity of a class. Let's see what we have here starting with the Mythics. Gore Drinker, very obviously meant to assist fighters in surviving extended trades with its active, and the combination of AD, health, and Omni Vamp further add to their endurance. Divine Sunderer also gives health and damage, and its healing from Spellblade can rack up a lot, especially against other high HP enemies. Then we have Legendary Items. Death Stance is attack damage and armor while delaying 30% of the damage you take. If you manage to take down your opponent, it cleanses the bleed and also heals you for a large chunk of your AD. Sterics Gauge. Big shield upon falling below 30%. One thing to make note of when it comes to attack damage is that attack damage by itself is not enough for optimal physical damage. As a result, it allows for more diversity in item properties with less risk for overlap. In most cases, a physical damage dealer needs more than just attack damage to be effective. Marksmen need attack speed and crit chance, skirmishers need attack speed and on-hit effects, assassins need lethality and armor penetration, fighters need health and durability. Since attack damage takes a backseat in favor of those other stats, there is less of a chance an item like Titanic Hydra could be abused by any and all AT champs. Now, I know what you're gonna say, what about the Gore Drinker meta when everyone and their dogs were building it? I'm not implying it never happens, but the risk is lower. Marksmen don't really want Steric Gauge since they need crit chance and attack speed, so Riot can make items tailored to that requirement. As such, designing AP Bruisers is way easier because the infrastructure is already in place to help them succeed. Ability power does not function the same way. It has no influence on a champion's stat line besides abilities. Ability haste is the closest thing to a synergistic stat for ability power as it's essentially attack speed for abilities. But ability haste applies to AD as well, so that kind of cancels out. Since ability power is exclusive to just abilities, it also means ability power can only be exercised as front-loaded or persistent damage since nothing stops a player from using every single skill at once. Bruisers depend on auto attacks for a sizable portion of their damage and that's kept in check by their low base attack speed. Looking at our 6 AP bruises from earlier, Mordekaiser's damage is persistent thanks to his passive. Silas is front-loaded. Rumble technically could be considered back-loaded, but only if he starts at zero heat. If he begins the fight overheated, then he was burst. Gragas is also front-loaded. He has no persistent or back-loaded damage to speak of. Shivana is a combination of front-loaded and persistent, and Singed is mostly persistent. This ties in with AP itemization in two ways. While it's true that magic damage champions do need a variety of resources to make the best use of AP, it's only by correlation, not causation. 
For example, Anivia would very much like to have a vast supply of mana so she can stay out for long periods of time without having to base. But unless you explicitly scale off of mana like Rise or Kassadin, mana doesn't directly increase your damage, it only increases your endurance on the field. In a single fight, mana doesn't affect ability power's efficiency in any way. For AD, stats like crit chance and attack speed do. Abilities don't care about things like mana and ability haste, they only care about how much value they provide when you press the button. The reason mages get mana and ability haste is to lessen their periods of vulnerability in between attacks, but abilities, in and of themselves, only care about ability power and to a lesser extent magic penetration. What this means is that AP champions get the most efficiency out of every single AP item in the game when it comes to damage, since AP is the only metric that affects a champion's damage barring edge cases like the aforementioned Rise and Kassadin. If you build Ludin's Echo, every AP champion gets the same amount of proportional damage increase from this item. Whether you're Victor, or Silas, or Mordekaiser, Ari, Syndra, doesn't matter. The same can't be said for AD items. Building Gordrinker on Jinx doesn't give her the same kind of power spike as on a Renekton because she also needs attack speed and crit chance. There is a much higher likelihood that AP items can easily fit into more subclasses than the intended audience. For instance, Demonic Embrace. It's very clearly meant to be an item for AP bruises like Mordekaiser and Singed, but we've seen them being used on Akali, Diana, sometimes Cassiopeia, Malzahar, Zhonya's Hourglass, primarily meant for squishy and mobile mages who don't have any defensive options, but almost literally every single champion who scales off of AP builds Zhonya's. There's not a single AD item that's built across every single physical damage dealer in the same way you can on Zhonya's. Naturally, Demonic Embrace will probably have less total damage output than a Rabadon's Deathcap, but if you're already doing enough damage to kill your target, then you might as well just get the extra health. The only stat AP champions care about is AP. Mana champions stop caring about mana once they get to Mythic and Tier. In other words, the only thing that can quote unquote restrict the efficiency of AP items is the champion's own kit. But even then, since AP champions don't use auto attacks to the same extent as AD, that leaves very few options to mix things up. Silas and Gragas play very much the same way, quick burst traits, Mordekaiser and Shivana are also kind of the same thing. They both have damage auras, a main damage nuke, and persistent auto attack damage. But this leads us to problem number two. Since ability power is solely focused on abilities, and abilities are only really restricted based on if they're on or off cooldown, any ability power champion, even bruisers, can theoretically one-shot you. If you so choose to, you can go full glass cannon 1000 AP on Shivana and just torpedo anything that moves. If you so choose to, you can go full glass cannon 1000 AP on Silas and insta kill your target in one rotation. Gragas can go full AP one shot. That's why almost all melee AP champions are assassins. What they have that AD champions don't is front loaded damage. If their abilities don't have any conditions that prevent them from being used at any time, that opens up the possibility for them to be used as burst. In theory, this can apply to physical damage bruises as well, but oftentimes it doesn't. Going full glass can-